I'm Robert Cabuto from Metal Rules, and today we're talking with Michael Starr from Steel Panther to discuss the new album, On the Prowl, due out February 24th. Metal Rules, rock on, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, dude. It's cool to finally meet you in person. You're so handsome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You too. Are you at your mom's house? It's a killer pad. Yeah, my wife and I's pad. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, that's cool. Good for you. That's a bitchin' couch. Yeah, it's a... It's, uh, they recline back and you can watch the big screen TV. It's pretty Did you neat. watch the Super Bowl on that couch? No, I went to a friend's house today, but we do, we do watch a lot of the games and sports. And I'm a YouTube guy, so I'm watching, you know, Metallica is always on there and Motley Crue and Kiss. So I'm always yeah. on. There. I love me some Motley Crue. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> so, oh, and by the way, I also like love the new Metallica song. I think it's so like Van Halen, Hot for Teacher. It's fucking awesome tune it is an, it's a crazy tune i loved it too i was like digging i can't wait for the album i think it comes out in april cool ours comes out next week i know i know february february 24th that's what yeah. i got so tell me a little bit about what the headspace you guys were in when you were making this album i think this one was a little different for us robert because we were it was during the pandemic mm -hmm. and you know we had a bunch of things going on where we're not able to work we're not sure where we're going to how we're going to pay our rent. Mm -hmm. And we're like, fuck, what are we going to do, man? So we did some live internet shows, which, you know, was able to generate some income. And then it just gave us time to really write without traveling. Cause normally we would, you know, put a record out, we tour, and then we take a few breaks, you know, to write and then record. And then we go back out and tour and then we finish the record and then we start the cycle all over again. But this time we had, a lot of idle time, a lot of time to sit and really reflect on stuff. And, you know, it's funny because I, I people have been ask, asking us about the song 1987 a lot. Yeah. And I think that's one of the songs that is reflective of the pandemic. Like you look, you listen to the song and it's, it, you know, we're reminiscing about the 80s because we finally have time to think about stuff. And, yeah. you know, there's another thing that happens too when you have a lot of idle time. You start, I start thinking about my own mortality. All right, I'm almost 70 years old. How much time do I have left to rock? You know, I better do something good. I better sing really good. So we tune, we used auto tune and everything on my voice this time. It sounds killer. <laughs> Unlike the other times. <laughs> yeah, like the other times. Never used auto tune before. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. You know, I, I think the CD is more explicit than usual for your uh, your CDs. Is this an evolution to the band? Well, you know, I think that we maintain the values of Steel Panther, which is to tell people exactly what we're thinking and not trying to not try and do it through an innuendo, but do it through honesty and straightforwardness, which I think people appreciate, you know, because when people dance around an issue, it gets yeah. annoying. It's like politics. Right. Just get to the fucking point. You want to fuck this girl or you don't want to fuck her? What do you like about magical vaginas? Why is there a magical vagina? Are you a one pump chump? Baby, put your money where your mouth is. You know what I mean? Awesome. And it's awesome. never too late to get some pussy tonight. <laughs> Absolutely never. I, I, I loved it. Uh, Magical Vagina was one of my favorite tracks on it. That's the one that keeps going on in my head. What a great you know, chorus. That, that chorus at the end reminds me of Journey. Yeah. After it was recorded and the producer mixed it all and he sent it back to us for a reference. I was like, man, that reminds me of Journey. But I know I'm not as good as Steve Perry. But it reminds me of that. And that really, and it was, and it's same with me. I'm like, it got stuck in my head. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I think the song should be a single, but there's so many, in our opinion, there's so many great songs on that record. We were having trouble picking singles. Yeah, I can imagine. And I'm glad that we decided on 1987 because actually went number one in Germany for four weeks and it's still in the charts. And we've gotten like over 3,000 spins in Germany. Oh which is a big deal for Steel Panther because we're not a radio friendly band. Right, right. So for us to have that type of coverage is pretty rad. And now all the bookings are start, starting to come in from Germany and the tours keep getting extended. So I think I'm going to buy my mom a car pretty soon. <laughs> that should do the trick. You know, yeah. you guys were one of the fast, first bands that came out during the pandemic to play, start playing live. I think you did a show in Florida, right? Oh, we played every red state that would take us. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously we did it as safely as possible you yeah. know a lot of these shows were set up with pods and everyone had to wear masks there was no meet and greets couldn't hang out i couldn't even talk to the stage hands you know oh, oh yeah. man talk to me i don't want to get sick so yeah no problem bro 
but you know, we didn't wear, we, we were together all the time and, and, you know, you have to test it every single show. Yes. Get yes. your temperature taken, but you know, we did all the stuff we we're supposed to do and we did a bunch of shows and we were able to, you know, put food on the table and, you know, I was able to feed some of the chicks at, from the strip club. And that, that was like my way of giving back. <laughs> cool. You know, um, what bring, what do you guys each bring to the table from um, a creative and mu musical sense that you put together for Steel Panther songs? Good question, Robert. So Satchel writes all the music and lyrics for all okay. the Steel Panther songs. Yeah. Okay. And what he does is he'll send his ideas over to us and we listen to them and then we figure out how we can put ourselves onto it. You know, of course you want to stick to the melodies he wrote and stuff, but you know, just, I bring my voice to it. The energy, the pronunciations are different than he pronunciates words. Right. It's just a different vibe. And Styx writes, you know, intricate drum parts and different fills into different sections of songs. And now our new bass player, Spider, right. adds, you know, adds his talent to it. And it's, it's a collective uh, effort at the end of the day. And we've always maintained that, you know, everybody is a part of Steel Panther in a, in a different way, you know. And, it's, and each part is a, uh, very important in the foundation of the band. We're like, a pill, each, each guy's a pillar. You know, we have the songwriter guy, the singer, the drummer, and the bass player, and that holds up the whole foundation of Steel Panther. No, that's great. You know, um, like I said, my favorite song was Magical Vagina. Can you tell us a little insight what uh, going behind the scenes of the creation of that song? Yeah, I totally can. You know, every now and then you'll run into a girl after the show and you, you guys get together or we'll get together or Satchel and then we'll get together. And you realize when you're inside of that situation, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great yeah and even the times when it's really great and it's magical yeah after you're done and they start talking you realize fuck this chick's annoying you know so that becomes a not magical vagina but when it's great inside experience and the talk is fun and cheap and killer and short that's a magical vagina awesome you know is there any topics that are totally unapproachable for steel panther is there yes. Off the, yes off the charts you can't go there what's it what is it politics religion really okay. world economics you know at the end of the day our job is the same mathematics <laughs> yeah man and mathematics bro fuck that the idea behind steel panther is we sell fun yeah. that's our job our job is to make you laugh rock your balls off and make you have a good time with your buddies. You know, you get have a few beers with your buddies, see some titties on stage. That's Steel Panther. You know, we want people to be able to come to the show, escape the realities of their job or whatever's bringing them down or bumming them out or just weighing down their minds or having giving them trouble falling asleep, you know? Yeah, yeah. Steel Panther will take that away from you for like three hours because even the journey to the show is part of the show. That's it's true. like, I don't know about you, if you've ever been to Disneyland, but... I have. When you're going to Disneyland, that's 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 Disneyland. Because yeah. you're excited, you're going to Disneyland. And when you get there, you're at Disneyland. And when you go home, you talk about Disneyland. And then right. when you get home and you realize, wow, that costs 500 bucks. Now we're broke. We can't pay our rent. That's the idea behind Steel Panther. You don't want to think about that stuff. You want it to be Disneyland. You want to be in the moment the whole time. Yeah, being in the moment is really difficult for people. Yeah. It's difficult for me. And Playing a live show in front of an audience puts you right in the moment. Yeah. Most people don't have attention spans long enough, so they have to, you know, they got to get excited about it and really stay focused. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people still have a hard time paying attention. You know, there's always people in, in the show, like on their phone. That's true. And, you know, and I get it. I understand it. And hopefully they film and they post some stuff and that's great. You know, they're like yeah. little journalists for us, you know, spreading the, the word of Steel Panther. But yeah, it's it's hard to have, you know, these kids today, some of the girls who get backstage, they never get off their phone. They're just on their phone and on the bus. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and we film them being on their phone. And then the drummer fills me filming them being on their phone. It's it's crazy. You know, um, I love your videos. All of them are really, really hysterical. And your live shows are entertaining. I saw you open up for Priest a couple of years back. Yes. Um, who are some of the great front men that you channel when you're on stage and when you're making these videos well first the first major influence vocally i had was through robert plant okay. 
And then after that, shortly after that was Robin Zander from Cheap yeah. Trick. I mean, he'd yeah. always kind of been there, but, and then this little band out of Pasadena came out in 1978 called Van Halen. Right. And once I heard Van Halen won, I tore my poster of Cheap Trick down and my poster of Led Zeppelin down and I put up Van Halen. And then shortly after that, a little band out of Hollywood called Motley Crue came out. Yep. That poster went up. Dawkins went up. Cinderella went up. Rat went up. White Line. And the list goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. So those are the major influences for me. David Coverdale is a big influence for me. Yeah. But mostly I would say, you know, David Lee Roth, Scorpions, and oh. Rat are my three hardcore favorite bands. Yeah, I would have to say Scorpions. ACDC, Van Halen, those are my top. Yeah, that's the thing. I could never sing ACDC because it was really difficult for me. Yeah. I didn't like have that kind of voice. Right? So, yeah, yeah. It's a different style of singing that, you know, it was more of the, uh, <clears throat> uh, singing that way is very difficult. Yeah. I know it can ruin your voice if you don't, I guess, if you don't do it properly. Yeah, now we don't do it right. It's bad. Struggling with it. And he caught himself, into, he got himself into a situation where he's singing that style all the time. So it's probably taking a toll on him, I would imagine. Yeah, it will. Or it won't. Axel Rose is still doing it, right? Yeah. Is that who you just said? No, no I was talking about uh, Brian Johnson, but Axel oh, Rose. Oh, Brian Johnson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny because his voice is so loud, it fucked up his hearing. How about that? That'll do it. You know, um, did you see the video with David Lee Roth dancing to some song? Um, and then he falls at the end on top of the uh, his backdrops? Yeah. Can I just say that for me, Van Halen is a 10-year span of amazing awesomeness. I don't know what happened when he left Van Halen, but something happened after, uh, what record was that? Uh, Skyscraper. 1984. 1984. No, after Sky, after solo, second solo record, Skyscraper, a third okay. solo record. Yeah. Something happened, and I don't know what it was, what happened to him, but he just changed his style. He's just yeah. a different, different style. But he's still a legend, you know? Yeah. He's still the guy. It was funny because at the end he falls and I guess he filmed it that he was tripped over his spin and he fell down. At what point do you look at yourself and go, you know what? At a certain age, I have to stop doing this. And oh, I remember. I remember it clearly, Robert. Yeah. I'm on the drum riser, which stands about six to eight feet, depending on yeah. what menu you're playing. Mm -hmm. And usually I'll jump off it. And yeah. this time I was scared to jump off it because I don't know what's going to happen when I land. Yeah. So I just kind of went back and walked down the stairs and jumped off the last stair and it still hurt. And I realized I can't jump anymore. Not like that. Right. You know, after a while, your, your body just can't take it. It's like, it's like your car tires. Yep. You drive for 50,000 miles and they're worn out. But all you got to do with the car is you replace the tires with your knees. You can't replace your knees. Well, you can, you can, that makes it even worse. You can't <laughs> jump after that for sure. <laughs> But you still don't want to mess around with it. Eddie Van Halen, Paul Stanley, all those guys had, you know, I think knee pro knee surgery. Yeah, and knees like and hips. hips neck, right. neck, neck. I had a neck issue where from rocking out and, you know, shaking my head and also from surfing, uh, I wore out a couple discs in my neck and I had to have them replaced. And now I feel, I wish they could do that for your knee because I can do all the stuff I used to do with my neck now. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. I, um, I've had two back surgeries. Yeah. Uh, lower back by my waistband. L6? Discectomy, yeah. I don't remember, to be honest. It was 10 and 15 years ago. It's been great since. But nothing exciting with jumping off anything. It was more like, you know, digging a ditch. And then I, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you, man. <laughs> Putting mulch down on the lawn or something ridiculous. And like, what the hell? But I think it was degenerative. But that's a whole other story. Well, so when, you're masturbating really and you pull, when you're masturbating and you pull a muscle on your shoulder, that's when you know you're old. Or you get tennis elbow. Yeah, tennis elbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing you don't want. I don't play tennis, but I have tennis elbow. How is that? Uh, right and it's, all, it's only in my right hand. That's weird. It's, it's a very odd, you know. Um, you guys released a pedal, a guitar pedal? Called yeah, it's called the 1987. Melted. Yeah, but before that, it was Pussy Melted. Oh, yeah, that was, that was the very, that's what the one that started our new business line of guitar pedals. The yes. Pussy Melter was the, the genesis of that company for us. Yeah. So, you know, that was, there was some backlash and how to be taken off the market. How do you avoid with all of your music, all of your songs, all of your lyrics, the cancer culture that's out there right now? Because that's, a, tell that's you, a tightrope to walk, I would imagine. Uh, well, let me tell you just quickly about the Pussy Melter. Yeah. Initially, it was a plug-in, an electronic download 
okay. on a website that Satchel had created for this website. Yeah, Tone Pro. And uh, somebody complained about it and they pulled it off their website because the woman thought it was offensive to her. So we just thought, you know what? Let's make a pedal out of it. Yeah. So we made an actual physical pedal and yeah. sold it. And so, you know, now we're like, I don't know, you're asking like from even from the beginning of the band, we never really thought about being canceled. We never thought about any of that. We just did what we did and we still feel the same way. And we don't change our values for our writing techniques because we just, you know, once you start doing that, you officially have jumped a shark. Yeah, no, I get it. I, de I definitely get it. And I, I'm glad you're, it's great entertainment. It's great fun and it's great enjoyment. And for the people who want to, and I believe it wholeheartedly for anything across the board. If you enjoy it, let it be. If you don't enjoy it, don't listen, don't watch it. You know, and yeah. that's it's, it's pretty simple. It's like if you go to see a comedian yep. and you don't like his jokes, you leave. Exactly. You go see a band, you don't like what they're doing. You don't have to stay, just right. leave. That's exactly it. You know, you did a great cameo in Crash Diet song, Powerline. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's almost like um, they wrote that song for you, that particular part. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was excited to do it. We've been, you know, passing each, we've crossed each other's paths so many times and we still have been trying to do a tour together, but their album cycle, we're just off. We're off on album cycle. So it hasn't worked out. They're, um, they're, they're, that last album they put out is tremendous. There's not it's one great. Bad song on that. And they're I the most underrated that. heavy metal band out there. Yeah. I don't even know if they've ever been to America. Were you talking about a potential tour in America or over where yeah. they are? No, we want to bring them over here because they need to come here. Yes, definitely. What a, what a killer band that is. How did you get involved with them other than just passing by from previous tours and things like that? How did you well, we're, we're in contact on Instagram and, uh, you know, I just, I like their stuff. I comment on it and, and they reached back out to me and they asked me if I wanted to sing on one of their songs. And I said, yeah, and it was during the pandemic. So I got all the time in the world. <laughs> That's very funny. That was a, that's a great one. It just cracks me up all the time. It takes you a while to figure out what the punchline is at the end of that. Right, yeah. Those people who haven't watched it, you got to watch it to get the punchline. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool, yeah. It's a, it's, it was, I, and that's one of the other things. If somebody asked me to be in one of their videos, I say, let me see the, the, the script of the treatment for it. Right, right. So I want to make sure it's, it's fun. You know, I don't want to be in anything depressing. I hear you. No, I get it. You know, what are a few cover songs that you guys would ever consider doing that you could really give it the Steel Panther treatment and really make it your own. Is there anything out there that you'd really love to explore? Um, well, you know, we did one years ago on, on our first record and we did a song by the Backstreet Boys called I Want It That Way. Really? Yeah. I got to go back and listen to that. Yeah, I got to check it out. Now, this is one that we, that it's exactly what you're asking. That was what we, we thought, let's do that. Let's do that. That would be really cool. And it came out great. You just check it out. It's it's awesome. I will. I will. They're on a TV commercial now for like soap or laundry detergent or something. Like hey, that. everybody needs to pay their mortgage. You know what That's I mean? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. You know, talking about your videos earlier, I have to believe that you could probably, the, the stuff that didn't make it into that three, four minute video is probably awesome and priceless. Do you? Yeah, man. There is so much B-roll that you it would just blow your mind. I can imagine. Do you, is, is there ever talk about putting that all out? Because that would be awesome. Glory hole. That would be awesome. She's tight. Have that. I, I would love to see the whole five hours of filming of that. You know, yeah, that, that's a really, that's, that's, that's probably will come out with the autobiography when we retire or after we die. Someone will get all that footage and put it together and go, this yeah. band that never got super huge. These are all the, you know, all that shit. But yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff. I have cases and cases of, I've saved every clothing from each tour that I've ever worn. Yeah. All of my wardrobe case here. And I keep them, I don't know why I do, but I just, I, I look at like the touring cycle of Van Halen with David Lee Roth. And I thought, God, wouldn't it be cool if you could get those, buy those actual pants or if Absolutely. they still exist. And it turns out he's done the same thing. He saved every single tour Alfred he's ever worn. Have you ever met him? Yeah, I've met him several times. Uh, is he a nice guy? He looks like he's like a fun, wild, crazy guy. Yeah, he's a great dude. I met, I had dinner with him at the Rainbow. And uh, I was so excited to meet him. And yeah. he came and he sat down. And I thought, I'm going to really get to know David Lee Roth, right? 
And he sat down and was like, hey, man, how's it going? Did you ever have dinner with Diamond David Lee Roth before? And I'm like, no, this is cool, dude. How you doing? I'm feeling good, man. You know, I fucked a bunch of girls last night and just getting <laughs> drunk. I was like, holy shit, this guy is on stage all the time. He's on, yep. All the time. It was like, and then he just, I swear to God, it was like he had to pee or something, but he just goes, all right, later. And he split. That was it. That was it. What was year like, was that? Uh, I think it was around, I want to say probably 99. Okay. So he had the long hair back then, right? Yes. He had long hair. That was before the Sammy and Dave tour. Yeah. I it was the, right? it was the couple tours prior to the Sammy and Dave tour. Got it. Got it. Got it. A friend of mine was playing guitar for him and that's how I got to know. I got to hang out with him. I and met then, him. Just, uh, I met him in New York. He did a TV appearance, nothing to what you're saying, but it was just, you know, a picture and autograph and it was pretty nice. Yeah. He's, I cool. mean, he's the guy's a legend and, you know, absolutely. Just by far one of the best front men ever, I think. Yeah. By far. You know, I'm, I'm friendly with his sisters. They used to come to our shows all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, you know, she would tell me he just loves your band. I, I ran into him 2015 in Hollywood at a club called Lucky Strike. Yeah. And what was going to happen was it going to be, Steve Vai and uh, Greg Bissonette had reached out to me and said, hey, we're thinking about doing the Eat Him and Smile record from first song to the end. Wonder if you would want to sing it yeah. because Dave, you can't do it because of Van Halen. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And then the day before the show, David Lee, uh, Steve Vai calls me and says, hey, man, Dave decided he wants to do the show. Hey, sure. But you should still come down. We'd love to have you. So I went down. And I went in the dressing room and I, and I walk into the dressing room and Dave's always like, Hey, look who it is. Steel Panther is here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I was like, man, you got, you fellas are pretty damn good. I listen to some of your stuff and I think you guys got a nice career going on for you, man. I'm like, wow, thanks Dave. And that, that time he was like, he was just a normal dude. He wasn't yeah. on a show. We talked, he, well, he talked, <laughs> <laughs> he talked for like 20 minutes and I got a picture with him and it was great. Yeah, that was an infamous show that never happened. Yes, sir. Yes, it was. It was an infamous While we were talking backstage, the band had left the backstage to go on stage to tune their stuff and get ready. Yeah. While Dave and I were talking, the fire marshal shut down the show. Yeah. That was that, that would have been an awesome tour. To begin with, with Dave, I, and I can't imagine why that didn't happen, but that would have been just something. Anytime. You don't even need an anniversary to put the Eat and Smile thing together. Yeah, it's probably just money and timing and scheduling and right. all the stuff that goes with it that people don't know behind the scenes, you know? I have one last question. I want to be respectful to your time. Glory Thank Hole, you. true story or not? Glory Hole is a true story. Really? Yeah, true story. That's that's the genesis of it. Is Like most of our songs come from experiences that we've actually had wow. and you know some of them are from when we we're younger obviously yeah. Yeah. like 17 girls in a row that's a younger one yes <laughs> i don't think it was i don't think it was 17 but it was like four or five you know what i mean oh, but wow. yeah it's it's an experience we had as a new touring band going to france and playing in paris for the first time and you know enjoying what paris has to offer which are glory yeah. holes i i almost drove off the road when it came on my car stereo when i was playing it you know, I think I was interviewing yeah. Sashel at the time, and I just almost drove off the road crying because I thought oh, it was great. Really nice and then the video was tremendous too. Thank you. So, well, listen, I want to be respectful to your time. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was a real pleasure, real honor, very insightful. And I can't wait to see you guys when you come around to New York and New Jersey. Awesome, Robert. See you soon, man. Thanks for the Thank interview. You. Have a Bye. great day. Bye-bye.